before we start this video, I just want to say that this is an extended squid farm tutorial that gives an in-depth look into the mechanics of how the farm works as well as rate tests and theory. If you just want a quick how to build a squid farm tutorial, click the link in the icons above or the link down in the description below. Hello and welcome to another Minecraft Bedrock Edition tutorial by me, Foxy No Tail, here on a creative download of the truly Bedrock Survival Realm. And we're here today to look at squid farms. You might have recognised this type of thing from places before, but this is basically what's known as a perfect squid farm. And the reason it's a perfect squid farm is that although we're getting fish spawning in it at the moment, when we're at the right K AFK point, we will only get squid spawning in this and the occasional dolphin. And after a little bit of AFK work, you will see that we get a whole ton of squid ink. Just bear in mind, while you are close to this thing, you will get fish spawning in there, which will give you a lot of fish and a lot of bones, which is why there's a lot of fish and a lot of bones in these chests. If you AFK it properly, you should just get pretty much squid and the odd bit of fish from the dolphins. Now, I'm going to go through why this works and how this works and also how to build the farm. So first of all, I'm going to explain how and why this works. And basically, it works because we've got this area of water here that squid and fish and dolphins can spawn in and then they can't spawn anywhere else. Slack Lizard and I have built this above the ocean. We've never ever gone down below this platform. If we went below this platform, we would start getting fish and dolphins and squid in the water down there, and they're gonna stay there. They're not gonna unload because Minecraft Beggar Edition doesn't unload things. We built the platform at Y equals 150, giving us a safe area below that that we could fall into a little bit and activate our Elytra so that we didn't fall into the danger zone and load anything in the water. If we drop down below Y equals 150, we run the risk of things loading up in the sea and once things are in the sea that will reduce the mob cap and prevent things from spawning in the water area that we've created above the platform. The problem with bedrock addition is once things have spawned in the water they won't despawn so you can never ever get rid of them unless you use commands or cheats once things have loaded in the water so it's important never to fall off the platform. So when we built these farms we never ever touched the ground we built the whole thing from a platform across there built this safety platform out so if we felt down while we were building we wouldn't fall to the ocean and therefore we know for sure that there is absolutely nothing down there preventing things spawning so we've completely maximized spawning up here now this is actually a really easy farm to build all it is is a platform full of rails which basically loop around with magma blocks on top and a couple of layers of water. Now we've actually done four layers of water. I don't think you need to. I think you only need a couple of layers of water for this. You might only even need one layer of water. And then we've got a couple of hopper minecart unloaders here. That is it. All we have to do then is determine the best AFK spot to load this thing so that we only get squid and dolphins spawning and not fish. Dolphins and squid share the same mob cap and they share the same spawning algorithm. So if we get dolphins, then we're going to get squid. Now, if we come up to this level here where we've got this AFK platform, we are actually far enough away that no fish will spawn. We're not close enough for fish, but we are close enough to get squid and dolphin spawning, as you'll see in a second. There we go. We've got a couple of squid just over there. They've spawned in. They're going to die. They always spawn in packs. You never get just one dolphin or one squid. You always get two or three at once, which is great. They're not ever so regular to spawn, but when they do spawn, they spawn in packs and you end up with loads of drops. So this system's actually completely backed up. We do need a bigger storage system here. We've got all the chests full and it's even coming back to the hoppers where the minecarts are. So that's why the minecarts aren't going off again and picking up any more drops. We do need to expand this, but it just shows you that a few hours worth of AFK can completely fill your boxes. And we do get some fish whenever we move close to it fish spawn so we get fish and bones in there now we could make this into a fish farm as well by lowering our afk spot if you want to get fish and bones from this you can as well but we just want squid all we want is squid so our afk point is higher up so that we only get squid okay so i have a bunch of command blocks here that will basically detect fish dolphins turtles and squid and it will replace them with a concrete block of the associated color so if it detects a cod it will replace it with a concrete block and get rid of the cod if it detects salmon it will replace it with pink dolphins are blue squid are black and turtles are green now dolphins turtles and squid all share the same mob cap so we only want squid and dolphins we don't want to be near beaches loading turtles because that will ruin our farm salmon and cod also share the same mob cap we could also add tropical fish to this but we're not in a tropical fish biome or a warm ocean biome so we should be all right for that 
So when I flick this lever, what it's going to do is it's going to turn mob spawning on so fish and dolphins and things can start spawning and it's going to replace them with the coloured blocks. But before we do that, we want to actually fly around and look at some of the tests I've done already and see if we can explain a little bit of the theory. So basically this white block here is where I started and what I did is I ran the commands and I waited here for an absolute age and basically the blue and the black dots are where squids and dolphins spawned and the orange and the pink ones are where the fish spawned and you'll see that most of the fish were around this area here apart from the occasional one round there. Now there's two things of interest here, one is that the fish have spawned on a high level of ground so the, where, the, where the ocean is more shallow and not over the deeper parts of the ocean apart from where these blocks are already. Then over here you can see a similar pattern we've got a shallower area ocean there where we've got all of the fish and the salmon and the squids and the dolphins are more around the deep area and then if we come over to an area that is very very deep you'll see that we get a ring like this and this is because on this particular test I actually AFK'd at the bottom of the ocean. Now what I'm going to do is try and explain how fish and dolphins and things spawn and it's probably not quite what you expect. And what the game does, it doesn't look around the water to spawn the fish, it actually looks at the seabed. So when it's when the player is in the area, the game will look around that player's spawnable area and it will say, right, is this spot here too close to the player? If it is, let's not spawn one. Is it far enough away from the player, i.e. this spot here? Yes, it is. Okay, we can spawn a fish. But it won't spawn the fish on the floor there. It will then pick a random Y coordinate somewhere up here to actually spawn the fish. Okay, so fish and salmon want to spawn closer to the player than dolphins and squid. So fish and salmon do a block check on the ocean floor, not in the water. They will check a block on the ocean floor and the game will decide, yes, I'm going to spawn a fish there. It's far enough away from the player or it's close enough to the player. Let's spawn a fish. But it doesn't spawn it at the bottom of the ocean. It actually spawns it high up in the, at the water near the level like this. So this is why when you're flying around, you'll often see fish or salmon spawning really close to you while you're swimming. Whereas the game actually thinks they're further away because the game is checking the ocean floor. It's not checking these blocks here where they're actually spawning. It's checking the distance from the player based on how far away the player is from that spot it's chosen on the ocean floor. So if we're swimming around here, let's say for instance that we are that white block there and we're swimming around there and the game says, right, I want to spawn a fish on this block over here and it says right is this red block far enough away from that white block yes it is okay we'll spawn a fish but it doesn't spawn a fish down there it spawns it up here up near the surface so that's why when you're swimming around you often see fish or salmon actually spawning in right in front of the player now squid and dolphins actually have a larger radius around the player than fish so you don't tend to get them spawning as close to the player they tend to be further away and if you look at these tests we've done we get the orange and the pink blocks which are the fish a lot closer to the player than you do the squid and the dolphin so you can see this one's a lot better this is an afk i did from the ocean floor we get the orange and the pink around the player very close but the squid and the dolphins are further away I just want to take a second in the video now just to say that if you're not already subscribed to my channel and you're enjoying this sort of content then please do come along my channel is youtube.com forward slash foxy notel hit the subscribe hit the bell for more notifications and also check out my other tutorials I have done tutorials on all sorts of things including iron farms concrete farms how to make smooth stone we've done witch farms guardian farms you name it I've pretty much done it so yeah make sure you come along and don't forget to drop a like on this video too Okay, now we're going to look at how we build this thing and just remember if you're going to build this and you want the rates to be as good as ours, basically getting as many as possible, you need to make sure you build it above an area of ocean that has never ever been loaded. And I don't mean go to an area of ocean that you've been in before and then come up and then start building because things will have spawned in there and they will stay spawned. You need to go to a brand new area of your world that you've never explored before. Now if you want to find an area of your world that you've never explored before, there is a way to do that if you have access to a world download and you have access to a PC. Now on the PC there are two apps that we could choose from that will do this job for us. There is Universal Minecraft Editor or there is MCC Toolchest. A Universal Minecraft Editor is good because you can load in worlds from other consoles and things like that if you can get a download of your world off a USB stick or something. 
The thing I don't like about Universal Minecraft Editor is it doesn't order the worlds in the same order that they show in your game, whereas MC Toolchest does. Now, Universal Minecraft Editor does tend to be a little bit quicker at loading the worlds than MCC Toolchest, especially if it's a big world. Once it's loaded, you can basically go to your chunk locator, which will bring up a map and uh, just basically move the map around until you find areas that haven't been mapped out. As you move the map around, you start getting areas like this, which has got big white gaps in it. Those are areas that have never been explored. Another thing you can do to help is you can come to chunkbase.com and use the biome finder to put your seed in and look around your world and try and find areas of ocean on the map so you know where you're looking and then try and find those areas in the world. So if we go over here and we say, well, I don't think anyone will have loaded this area here, minus 8,900 by 2,000. We can put that in here, minus 8,500 by 2,000. And if we locate that, that takes us to this. It's completely white, which means those chunks have never been loaded. Now, Slack and I are actually working in this area here, which is minus 3,000 by 2,000. So if we put that in here, and locate that you can see that's where our squid farm is you can see we've now loaded that area but we've never loaded it underneath the farm we've only ever flown above if you fly too close or if you go too close to the water things will start spawning but you can see all the area around it we've not loaded yet which is perfect for doing this so we could we could come across and make even more farms and things in all of this area where it's ocean as well without having to worry about things having already spawned in the water below now I'm going to do a very quick tutorial on how to build this now. It doesn't matter how big you make this, you can make this as big as you want, but if you do it too big you're going to be out of the area where things will spawn. We've chosen to do basically four chunks, so this is a two by two chunk farm. We are planning on doing this bigger and adding more chunks in. The more chunks that we add in, the more squid we will get spawning because the more available spawning spots will be. Okay, so I've built a nine by nine block platform which is just over a quarter of a chunk in size and what I'm going to do now is going to take out the middle row of blocks and I'm going to put redstone blocks in there. These are going to be for our powered rails and I'm just literally going to snake this minecart track around like this until we've covered the entire thing. Now the way we've chosen to do it is that when we get to the other end we just put another rail down like that and a redstone block in front of it to make the minecart then go back again but you could do it as a loop you could have it going all the way round and then back to the beginning again it really doesn't matter as long as your minecart does the full circuit and then comes back again within five minutes if it takes longer than five minutes to do the circuit it's gonna you're gonna lose drops because they're gonna despawn once you've got that then basically just put your magma blocks above all of that track to cover up the entire area now we're going to do the glass two blocks high and we're going to just have one layer of water and the reason we're doing the glass two blocks high is just so things don't jump out. I don't think they will be able to jump out because they'll be spawning on the magma blocks and getting sucked down. But just in case, we do not we do not want things falling out of this and ended up in the water down there because they will never despawn. Now you might have noticed on Slack and my farm over here, some of the fish actually ends up outside of this and on the floor down here that's because they will sometimes spawn right on the edge of the magma blocks and glitch through the glass. So in order to prevent that, what we need to do is put even more magma blocks around and another wall around just to stop them being able to fall down and go into the ocean or, like we did over there, put a state safety platform underneath that they can fall onto and die. But this is probably the cheaper and the easier way to do it. Now you don't have to use glass here. We use glass just so we can see through it. We can see what's going on with the farm. You can use any type of block you want. Now what we need to do is add the water in and it's very difficult to do this with buckets because normally you can create an infinite water source in the middle like that, pick it up and then move that across. But because we're on magma blocks and they are te technically now bubble columns, we can't do that. So the easiest way to do that is to get some ice, which is now easily farmable in 1.12, and either put them along the edges like that and let them melt, or the quickest way to do it and the cheapest way to do it is to put ice along the center line like that and then break it. Now obviously I'm going to have to break that in survival. Okay, so now we have an area that fish and squid can spawn in, and as you can already see, we have got fish spawning in there, which is absolutely amazing. They're going to start dying. Now what we need to do is the hopper minecart unloader. So we'll get our end of our track, which is over here. We'll bring it out a few blocks just so that it's not going to interfere with that glass there, and we're going to build our hopper minecart unloader, which is quite easy-ish, maybe. We're going to start with the chest here, we're going to put a hopper into the back of that and then we're going to do two more hoppers like that. We're going to put a detector rail on that one, we're going to put a powered rail on that one and a normal rail in the middle. Then next to this detector rail on this side, we're going to have two blocks like that and then we want another block 
down at the bottom there next to that hopper there. We're going to put a piece of redstone dust there and there and we're going to put a repeater there like that. Next we're going to put another block in front of that hopper there, we're going to put a comparator in front of it like that and then we are going to put a block in front of that. In front of this repeater we're going to put a block there and a block in front of it there and put some redstone dust on it. Now we're going to put a torch there, a block there, a repeater there and then a block there like that. And that's pretty much done. Now I'm going to put some slabs on the top of those blocks just to stop it being spawnable and I believe that is the hopper minecart unloader completely done. So what we can do is we can pop our hopper minecart on there, that's going to go underneath there, it's going to pick up any of the blocks that it's got and when it comes back it should stop and it should then unload all of the items from there. I have made a little bit of a mistake with this minecart track here, I had a redstone block there, Mine, hopper minecarts won't bounce back off that so what we need to do is put a solid block there and the redstone block next to it like that, that will work now. And now you can see the hopper minecart will bounce back and it will start coming back again. Now all we've got to do is work out where we want our AFK platform to be, which is just basically a case of going up here until fish stop spawning but squid carry on spawning. So we're still a bit close here. I'd say we probably want to go up to around about 198. If you measure 30 blocks away from the magma blocks, not the water, that is an ideal place to AFK. Above the farm that will allow squid and dolphins to spawn but no fish will spawn at that distance. Okay, so I've disabled mob spawning to make sure no fish spawn while I'm setting this up. I've emptied out the chest, I've got everything prepared, I've made my little fancy contraption that I use for tutorials which is basically going to time as an exact hour, so we get a perfect hour test result. And I'm going to go in here, I'm going to wait for an hour and I am going to come back and see what results we got. So all I need to do is press that to turn mob spawning back on, flick that lever on, and then once that redstone lamp comes on I know that's an hour gone okay so the hour is up it's time to check the chest let's have a look what's going on I think the hopper minecart should have pretty much dropped off everything they've picked up and if we look in the chest we got 444 ink sacks and a little bit of cod that'll be from the dolphins that's really good not bad 444 in one hour let's do another test and see what we get from that There we go, another hour is up. Hopefully there was a little bit of a time lapse that time. I don't know how that will come out in the edit, so we'll see. And let's just check and see what we've got. We have got this time... Ooh, more. 483 this time, which is pretty epic. Test 2, 483 ink sacks. So it's going to be around about four, 450 to 500 ink sacks you'll get in an hour from this thing, which is pretty good. Now what I want to do is try and make this thing bigger and see if we can get any more rates by having more of these platforms. Okay, so I've basically made four copies of this thing from that. I've basically just cloned it, which is why they're all facing the wrong way around. And I've joined them all together with this long hopper line. Everything will come to this chest in the middle. They've all got hopper minecarts running about on each one. Everything should be good to go. But I've just stumbled across yet another Minecraft bug. I can't punch. The punch noise is happening. And if I look at glass, the glass is breaking. But I've got no animation. The animation's broken for some reason. I don't know why. Anyway, I'm hoping that being here, we will be able to load all of these things and we shouldn't be worrying about that one over there, which I am trying to wave to, but I can't. Let's just see what happens, shall we? We're going to do another hour test and see what happens. Well, looking at this from here, we can see things are spawning right at the other ends of these things. So we are close enough to get squid spawning right at the edges, which is a good sign. And it looks like plenty's going on. We're seeing lots of bubbles, lots of things happening. Okay, one hour is up. Let's see what we got from this thing. Let's see what's in the chest. Hopefully everything's been collected and it's all on its way back. I'm excited. Are you excited? It could be amazing. It could be rubbish. Go! Oh, interesting. That's 1,215 ink sacks in one hour by having four of these things. I don't know if we'd get more than that having even more than this. I think if we go out too far, we're just going to end up having it too far away from the for the squids to actually spawn but that's amazing 1200 ink sacks in one hour on the bedrock edition of minecraft you are welcome and i as i say not being able to wave to you right on that note i hope you enjoyed this video if you did do please leave a like if you haven't already please do subscribe and hopefully i'll see you all in the next one thank you bye